Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Shaman. This video is about how to ace the MCAT. Before I start on tips I recommend to ace the MCAT, I want to give you a little background about myself since this is a new channel. So I scored a 524 on the MCAT, which is in the 100th percentile, and I think this played a large role in me getting accepted into a top Ivy League medical school. And I'm not saying this to brag or anything, but I just wanted to give you a little background into my credentials. So one of the main reasons I'm making this channel is because there's a lot of advice and tips about how to succeed academically all over the internet, but I think a lot of those tips are not specific enough for the average viewer to succeed through. This channel is going to focus a lot more on specific tips to help you succeed. So with that said, let's get right into the video. So my first recommendation is actually one that a lot of people don't follow and it is to not take an MCAT course because if you don't take an MCAT course you're able to make your own tailored schedule. A tailored schedule is more effective because you can focus on your weaknesses rather than focusing on things you've already mastered. The second thing that is good to know are classes that you should or shouldn't take before the MCAT. So the classes I highly recommend for the MCAT are organic chemistry, biochemistry, chemistry, and biology. A lot of people skip out on biochemistry, but I think that is a very vital subject that you absolutely must take if you want to live up to your full potential on the MCAT. Two classes that will help you on the MCAT but are not completely necessary are physics and psychology. Physics because it's not a major part of the new MCAT. So if it doesn't fit into your schedule, you can still do well on the MCAT. Psychology will also help if you take it before your MCAT, but if you can't fit it into your schedule, then you'll be fine if you learn it independently because everything on the MCAT related to psychology is pretty easy and can be self-learned. The classes that aren't that helpful on the MCAT are a sociology class, an English class, and a math class. All the math you need on the MCAT is very basic. For sociology and English, the MCAT questions are quite different from what you'll learn in your college class, so it really isn't required to take them. Now as for what resources you'll need for studying for the MCAT, I highly recommend the Kaplan MCAT books. So this is one of the Kaplan MCAT books, there are seven of them. You can skip the verbal book. From my experience, I can tell you that Kaplan basically covers 99% of what you need to know on the MCAT. Many other companies' books skip useful info or don't emphasize it as much as Kaplan does. Also, Kaplan has a benefit in that it's easy to understand whether you're reading it for the first time and learning it or reviewing. And what you don't want to do with the Kaplan books or any other official practice resource is take the practice tests in the book. I know a lot of people do that, but I highly recommend against it. That's because the MCAT test makers word their questions in a very specific way, and they want you to think about questions in a specific way. And many test makers, including Kaplan, miss the mark on the way they want you to think about the questions. Another important thing to know when reviewing for the MCAT is how to prioritize. So if you look and compare these two books, they look pretty similarly sized. You can see them right here. but this is only about three questions on your MCAT, and this is about 30. So make sure you prioritize biochem the most and physics the least. The rest are just about equal. The second resource that I highly recommend are the AAMC official practice materials. They include passage-based question sets, practice tests, and flashcards. You basically want to do all three of those at least once, but you want to take the practice tests at least twice. So those are the only two resources you need. So what about the scheduling for the MCAT? So I break it down into two periods basically. There's a learning period and then there's a cram period. So in the learning period, it's basically from the beginning of college up to a month before your MCAT test date. And that's basically when you read the Kaplan books, you take detailed notes because you don't want to spend time rereading books when there's this much material. So you want to take very detailed notes and come back to those notes anytime you forget or need to refresh up on something. This time period is pretty flexible, so you can read the books however you want at whatever pace, as long as you get them done a month before your MCAT test date, before you enter that cram period. Also during this learning period, you're taking the relevant classes and absorbing the knowledge to succeed on the MCAT. 
So how I use the Kaplan books in this learning period was I basically, before every relevant class, such as before an organic chemistry class, I read the relevant organic chemistry Kaplan book. And I think that played a large role in me getting a 4.0 during college. So if it's still early in college for you, I highly recommend this approach. So the cram period is basically a month before your MCAT test date. So in the cram period, the schedule is pretty simple. You want to spend the first couple of days, maybe two to seven days, reviewing those notes you made. So after you've reviewed your notes, what you want to spend the rest of your time doing is taking practice tests. So what you want to do is take a practice test one day and then review the practice test the next day. And you want to keep repeating that until a day before your MCAT exam. So if you're doing it right, you should spend more time reviewing your exam than you actually do taking the exam. And the exam takes about six hours. So that's a lot of reviewing. So if you guys are interested, I can make another video showing exactly how you should review the exam properly. Because I think a lot of people don't do that right. You might be wondering, with that schedule, that is a lot of practice tests. Where do you get that many practice tests? The official source only has about three practice tests. So where do you get the rest? So remember those passage-based question sets I told you that the AAMC offers? So you want to conglomerate those sets into these sort of mock practice tests. So you want to take a, like 60 biology questions, 60 chemistry questions, 60 verbal questions, 60 psychology questions, and you can make a sort of unofficial practice test with those materials. If you want a step-by-step -step process of how to make those mock practice tests from the AAMC materials, then I can make another video about that. So a pro tip about scheduling for the MCAT is you want to set up your MCAT test date so that in that cram period right before the MCAT you don't have any school because balancing school and serious MCAT studying don't go well together. And those are all the tips I recommend in order to get a great MCAT score. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, tell your friends. Well that is sharing. <laughs> share it with your friends and family or if you know anyone who's also taking the MCAT and please subscribe if you want to see more videos about anything academic. And please let me know in the comments what videos you want to see in the future. So I hope this video helped you and I will see you in my next video.